Hi, I'm Andy. Thanks for watching. Today, we're going to talk about how to test a defrost sensor for your GE side-by-side. -side. Now, these defrost sensors, they're actually used in various forms throughout your refrigerator. It's the same type sensor that's going to sense how cold uh, your refrigerator section is, your freezer temperature, and also your defrost temperature. They send a response back to the control board. I'm going to tell you how to test these from the control board so you actually don't have to cut them out of your refrigerator to do the test. Let's get started. What you'll need to perform the test is a multimeter and a quarter inch nut driver to remove this panel. To remove the panel, remove the two top bolts and the one bottom bolt. The common symptoms that you'll find with failed sensors is it's either too warm or too cold in the refrigerator or the freezer section, or um, in the defrost sensor scenario, uh, your fridge may not be going through a full defrost cycle. So either inconsistent defrost cycles um, or it's just not defrosting at all. Let's take a look. So before you get started, Make sure that your refrigerator is unplugged from the wall. We're performing these tests on our refrigerator with no power. So the plug that we're going to be dealing with is J1. And if you look on the green section of the board, you can actually see J1 listed just to the left of the plug that you're working on. So how this test is done, take your black lead and count from the left. One, two, three, four, five should have a blue wire with a white stripe through it and that's where your black lead will go and we can test three sensors while we're here the fresh food sensor that's your refrigerator section the freezer temperature sensor and also your defrost sensor so it measures the temperature on the evaporator coil so from the left one two this will be your fresh food section. Mine measures out at 3.98. I'm room temperature right now. Pretty warm garage. And if you go one more to the right, 4.221, so roughly the same temperature. This is my freezer section. And one more to the right. Now we're four pins over from the left. Should have a brown wire. 4.076, and this is our evaporator temperature. So 4.22 inside the freezer, and then 4.07 on the evaporator, roughly the same, same temperature on both. So that's how you test those three. I'll take you to the bench now and show you a quick bench test of how these uh, thermistors work and the response that it sends back to the control board. I'm also going to talk about uh, the ways that you can install these. Now you can do it the easy way or the right way. <laughs> the easy way is just to strip the wires, put a wire nut on it, and call it done. But that wire nut's going to live in a pretty harsh environment uh, with lots of condensation. So what will happen is corrosion buildup um, impacts the sensor read that it's going to send back to the control board. So you'll see why that's important, and um, let's take a look. All right, now that you know how to test these thermistors at the control board, it's a really nice thing to know because now you don't have to cut the thermistor out of the refrigerator just to do that test. You can put your leads on the control board, and you know what resistance this thermistor is reading. So what that means, it's a, it's a thermal resistor thermistor okay so it's a resistor that changes its resistance based on temperature now in your tech sheet they're going to give you some guidelines to go by I'll also put this up on this screen it gives you a little bit more um, detail as far as reference points but they give us three reference points one is 77 degrees Fahrenheit 
that means we should read out at 4.92 ohms, 92K ohms. And then at 37 degrees, roughly the temperature of ice water, it should be about 14K ohms. So this just gives you a, a reference point to go by. I know that it's 75 degrees in my garage right now. So what you'll do is set your meter to ohms resistance, take one lead and touch it to one side of the thermistor, take your other lead and touch it to the other side. So at 77 degrees, we should be getting 4.92. We're pretty close here on our meter, 5.18. Now if I stick this in the ice water, which is about 36 degrees, somewhere between 34 and 36 degrees, we're going to see this resistance climb. And it's going to climb to roughly 14k ohms. So let's see how it does. So here you can see it's starting to slow down a little bit, and it puts us in the ballpark of that 14k ohms that we were talking about. So that's how you test one of these thermistors. It's a resistor that has variable resistance based on temperature, and then that resistance is what the control board uses to make its decisions on when to go into defrost and for how long, or when to run the compressor and for how long, when to run the fans. You get the idea. So if one of these thermistors is way out of spec or if it's open you know, if you did your test and and you got this kind of reading you know you clamped it and you're getting an open reading that thermistor for sure has failed you should be getting some kind of resistance like this but with the same test you're telling you're wanting to see if it's way out of spec as well so we should be in the 14k ohm range at 37 degrees but if we were in fact at 4.9 something you know that, well, that's the reading for 77 degrees, not for 37. So you could say that, hey, that, that thermistor has failed. That's way out of spec, and that would need to be replaced. There's how you test them. Now, as I mentioned, when it comes time to install one of these, there's an easy way, and there's a right way. <laughs> um, what I mean by that is the, the quickest, easiest way to install one of these things is to strip the wires back. I like to strip off about half an inch. So I strip off about half an inch. These would be the wires coming from your refrigerator or your freezer. You've snipped off your old sensor and now you need to install your new one. Well, you'd take the wires, twist them together, and throw on a wire tie and call it done. You know, you do both sides. Quick and easy and cheap, right? So now you have your new sensor installed and away you go. Problem is, this sensor lives in an extremely harsh environment. Uh, when the defrost heater comes on, it may see 100 degrees. Uh, when it's in a freeze cycle, it may see negative 15 degrees but also all that causes condensation. And that condensation ends up inside your wire nut that you just put on here. It causes corrosion, which causes bad connections. And the sensor is doing its job, but the control board is not getting the, the sensor's response. So it may not go into defrost, it may give wrong temperatures, it'll just do wacky stuff. You know, you've got the Apollo 13 scenario happening inside this wire nut and you can see where that's a bad thing. So, how I like to do it is take a little bit more time, do it the right way, because this is not a job you want to do twice. It's enough of a hassle that you don't want to tear this thing apart again. I like to solder these in place. What you'll need, you'll need a soldering iron. Mine's been heating up for about 10 minutes. You'll need some shrink tubing. Once you do the the solder, you want to protect that from the elements. Go ahead and slide those onto the wires from your refrigerator. So they're there once you get everything soldered up. And you'll need some solder. For movie magic, I'm going to use a 
extra set of hands here. And if you've never soldered before, it's really not complex. Um, what you do is you strip back the wires about half an inch. We're going to twist them together so that they're more or less straight. Like that. What I like to do is put the heat to, uh, to the copper where you're going to melt it, where you want to add the solder. Go ahead and add a little dot of solder there at the end. You can see the smoke comes out. Now that I've added some solder to the tip, that's going to help transfer heat better to the rest of this copper. Then basically just paint the copper wherever it's uh, copper colored, you want it to be silver colored. Then remove the heat, give it a second to set up. It'll cool down and it changes from a, a bright silver color like this to more of a dull silver color like the solder itself. Once that part's done, you can give it a tug, make sure it's not going anywhere. If you're satisfied you got it soldered up well, go ahead and slide that uh, shrink wrap over it. Take a lighter to it. And what's so nice about doing it this way, unlike that wire, t that wire nut that's going to get condensation and everything in it, this is sealed up on the sides. So that fresh solder joint that we just did, there's going to be no condensation that gets to that. Good solid connection, it might as well just be one solid piece of wire. Let's try the other one. We've got our shrink wrap already on there. Twist them together. Just a word to the wise, everything inside a freezer and a refrigerator is plastic, so don't set your iron down on plastic. Uh, good, good policy is if it's not in your hand, go ahead and set it down outside the refrigerator. So once you've got that second one wired up, give it a tug. Everything looks good there. Slip that shrink wrap over it. Take the lighter to it. This shrink tubing shrinks up to about a third of its original size. So basically shrinks up around the original wire, keeps your solder joints protected from the elements. So that's the correct way to install one of these thermistors. Again, you won't have to do it twice. Um, it's there for good. So I'll show you how this is done inside the, the freezer section, but wanted to show you here at the bench just because it's a little easier for the camera's sake. So you can get an idea of, of what I'm talking about. Uh, if you don't have a soldering iron, uh, you can pick one up for cheap on, on Amazon. This one is made by Vastu, and really good kit. Um, it's got the iron, of course. A little stand to keep it on while you're not using it. Comes with a solder sucker, so if you do any control board work. A uh, good set of tweezers, which is good for detail work. Extra tips, cleaning sponges, and a carrying case. I'll put the link to that in the description if you need one. Uh, let me show you how it's done inside the freezer. To access the thermistor, you'll need to remove all of the drawers and the shelves from your freezer side. Again, with the power unplugged, what we'll do is remove two quarter inch nuts with our nut driver from the top right and the top left of this back panel. Once those are removed, you may have a ground clip. It's a green wire that's clipped to the top of that panel. 
Just go ahead and pull that off with your fingers. Once that's off, you may find it easier to remove the light bulb. Then once that's removed, grab in the center of the panel. You'll pull, you'll pull up as you're pulling towards you. That exposes the evaporator. And in the upper left of the evaporator, you'll see the sensor that we'll be replacing. Now, as you can see, getting a camera into the works here and also doing, uh, <laughs> doing the work I need to do is a little bit tight. So I'll do my best to stay out of your way of the camera work here. But what we're gonna do is take this sensor. It's got a clip on it that clips on the very top part of this evaporator. Be gentle as you can with this, uh, with this tubing. It is a sealed system. So this clip actually comes off of the sensor itself. So once the sensor is off the evaporator, Take your wire cutters, give yourself, if you still need to test the sensor, give yourself some slack to do that. This one's trash, so we're just gonna go ahead and give ourselves as much slack as we can. Using your fingers, just go ahead and separate these two wires so that you can strip them back. Strip off about a half an inch. With your new sensor, we're gonna do the same. Strip off about half an inch and separate them out. Don't forget to put your shrink, shrink tubing on first. Got our new sensor with the shrink tubing on there. And you can make this, you know, you can trim this, uh, the length of this sensor up if you wanted to. We're just going to zip tie everything together once we get it soldered up. Um, make sure it stays out of the way of the fan and whatnot. Let this cool down for just one second before we put the shrink tubing on. Go ahead and have your lighter ready. Good solid connection. Take your clip, clip your new sensor in place, go ahead and clip that onto the top left of the evaporator again, 
And now we'll just take this extra wire and we're going to zip tie it out of the way. Now that our sensor is in place, wires are zip tied out of the way. We can replace our back panel. Don't forget this ground clip back on the top of that. Go ahead and replace your light bulb if you took it out in a previous step. Make sure not to over tighten these. Get them snug and then just a little, little bit tighter. If you crank down on them too hard, they'll short out the actual housing. That's never good. Congratulations, you're all done with your sensor job. And there it is, that's how you test and replace a defrost sensor on a GE side-by-side -side refrigerator. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching. If you have not already done so, please be sure to hit subscribe and a thumbs up. It helps a lot.